Steepest ascent method. This is quite an intuitive method, so it'll be a bit easier to understand, but also a bit more temperamental than some of the other methods. So we'll describe the method, we'll summarize it, and then we'll talk about the choice of this parameter alpha, which essentially controls how far we step from one point to the next as we try to converge onto the extrema. And then we'll work through an actual example with real numbers. Description of the method. So we're starting off with a function and I've drawn the function and its isocontours. How do we find the maximum? Well, let's start with a point X1. From there, we'll calculate the gradient. This is the direction of change at that point X1. Now that direction does not necessarily point to the overall extrema that we're trying to get to because the gradient only knows what's going on right here at X1 and it thinks uphill. Well, uphill is this direction at X1, even though we really would like to move in that direction. So the gradient's going to tell us to move in this direction and we hope the gradient does move us at least more toward the overall extrema. From there, we want to calculate a next point. So our next point is going to fall somewhere along this line. Where will that lie? And that really depends a lot on how we calculate that point. For example, maybe we look at this as a 1D optimization, in which case we'd end up somewhere right around here. Now that involves a lot of iterations. Perhaps a simpler way is just some fraction of the way along the gradient, which is what we'll do here. So we're going to pick a parameter alpha, and let's say this is a value of 0.5. We will move in the direction of the gradient and multiply it by this 0.5. So the bigger alpha is, the bigger our steps, and perhaps more quickly we can converge to that extrema. The smaller it is, the smaller the steps, and the more slowly we'll converge towards the extrema. But what we'll see, if we pick this too small, it'll take forever to get our answer. If we pick it too big, the algorithm goes unstable because it way overshoots the extrema. Let's proceed with 0.5. And so that takes us some distance along the gradient. And here we are at a new value of X2. We start all over again. We calculate the gradient at X2, and then we move in the direction of that gradient. How far do we move in that gradient? Well, that's controlled by alpha. Alpha times the gradient tells us how far. And that takes us to yet a third point, X3. And this keeps going. Now, at this point, if we calculated the gradient, the gradient's huge because the function's changing really rapidly. And in fact, we have way overshot where the extrema is. This is a bummer. And so the choice of that alpha parameter is very important. Summary of the method. So the method is essentially we make a guess, we calculate the gradient, we move along the gradient, and somewhere along that gradient is our next guess, and we keep doing this over and over and over. Now, probably the best way to move along that gradient is to look at it as a 1D optimization. However, that requires a lot of iterations and a bit more sophistication. So our algorithm won't take that approach, but that is a pretty good approach. So the algorithm we discussed goes something like this. We'll pick a starting point X. We'll calculate the gradient at that starting point, call that gradient G. If that gradient zero, we can say that we're done or even less than some kind of tolerance. We can say that we're done. Otherwise, we're going to move in small increments from our guess X in the direction of the gradient and how far we go, we're controlling through this parameter alpha. And I have a note here to remind us, if we look at this as a 1D optimization, that's probably the best way to move along that line, although increases the sophistication of your code. And then we go back to step two until that gradient is sufficiently small that we say that we're done. And that's it, that is the steepest ascent method. Let's look a bit more of the choice of alpha. And I have a series of animations where I've chosen a different value of alpha and you can see how it fails or succeeds. So here we're picking alpha one. 
So we're, we can jump really far. We should get to that extrema really fast. But what you can see is that it's jumping all over the place and basically going unstable. So in this case, the alpha is too big. Let's choose a smaller value, 0.5. Looks pretty good here, but it still does not seem to be converging. It seems to be just oscillating back and forth around that extrema. And in fact, this choice does not get there. This choice of alpha is still too big. Let's try a value of 0.25. Smaller increment, so it's going to take more iterations. But so far, this seems to be working. And in fact, we can conclude this is a good choice because it does converge to the extrema. And in this case, 0.25 is probably near ideal. What if we pick something smaller? Let's pick a value of 0.1. And I'll admit, when I first start a method and I don't know what value to pick for alpha, I'll just try 0.1 first. Uh, it usually does work although it's usually slower, a bit slower than other choices of alpha. And there really is no way to know that value of alpha ahead of time. We have to just play with it. But in my experience, 0.05 to 0.4 kind of range seems to be where this works. I think if your function's changing very wildly and radically, we need very smaller, much smaller values of alpha. If it's nice, smooth, well-behaved, we can very often get away with bigger values of alpha. Let's try a very small value of alpha, 0.01. Well, this will eventually get there. So if we make alpha incredibly small, we can't make it go unstable, but we can make this take forever to converge. For example, pretend every evaluation of your function takes a day to calculate. Uh, that puts us in a different mindset than where we're working on a function where it's essentially instantaneous. And so this can take forever to converge to the extremum. Small values will always converge. It's just that it may take a long, long time. And we see that here. And we could let this go, but you get the idea. Um, this is really creeping along. Some other smarts you could think about putting in your code is pick a large value. And if it seems to be oscillating, make the value go smaller, make it adaptive in some way. Let's go through an example. So we have this function and we would like to find the extrema. And we want to find the extrema within this interval. So we can go ahead and plot that using MATLAB and it looks, like something that has an extrema, I guess. So let's make a, an initial guess for position. So we're sitting right here at an X value of two and a Y value of zero. That's our first guess. Now we know in this algorithm, we're going to have to keep calculating the gradient. So we go ahead and just analytically calculate the gradient. Up here's the definition of the gradient. Here's where I throw in our definition of x, our actual function, and after we apply the derivatives, this is the gradient. So this is the equation that we will use to keep calculating the gradient at different points. And that's pretty simple and easy to use. So our guess, our first guess is at an x value of 2, a y value of 0. So we can plug those values into our gradient equation. And this is the gradient at our first guess. And we can see the direction. I've rotated the plot, so our, our guess is right here. We can see that a little bit better. Here's our gradient. Here's the direction that it's in, and it is taking us uh, pretty directly towards our extrema in this case. It's not zero, it's very big, so we're not gonna stop. We'll keep going. So we have our initial guess. We've calculated our gradient. And we're picking a value of 0 0.1. As I said before, that's the value I pick first. And I may play with that later, but you know, 0.1 is usually pretty good. So we'll calculate our next point, x2, as our first point, plus this alpha parameter times the gradient. And so we have all the numbers now. We can calculate our second point. So remember, our first point was down here somewhere. The gradient pointed in this direction, and we moved this distance. This is now our second point. 
and we'll start all over. We'll calculate the gradient, move in that direction, and keep going until the gradient becomes small enough that we know that we're stopped and we're near the top. So we calculate the gradient at the second point. So here's our expressions for gradient. We throw in these values for X and Y, and we calculate the gradient. And here I'm plotting the gradient. The gradient is smaller than it was the first iteration, but it's not small enough to stop, so we keep going. We're still not done. So now we calculate our third point as our second point plus alpha times the gradient at the second point, and we do our math, and this is our point. And, and the plot, I'm showing it right here. So we're getting closer. We will calculate the gradient, we'll move along the gradient, calculate the gradient, move along the gradient, and keep doing that until the gradient is sufficiently small. I set a tolerance for the gradient to the magnitude to be 10 to the minus three. And when I do that in 77 iterations, I arrive right around the extrema, pretty close to the top within 10 to the minus three. And this is what I got for the extrema, an X value of two and a Y value of one. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching this video. I love hearing your stories about how these videos helped you. I also love answering your questions. So please tell me your stories and ask your questions in the comment section. I promise I will try to answer every single question that's asked. If you like this video, hit the like and subscribe button. I also recommend visiting the official course website that has links to the latest versions of the notes, the latest videos, and there's lots of other resources to help you learn, including implementations in MATLAB. I'll see you in the next video.